guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So, today's video, as I did mention in my previous video, is going to be a Draw This In Your Style challenge set by Miriam Tillerson. It is of her Bloom piece and honestly I'm really pleased with how mine turned out but I'm going to talk more about that in the actual video so let's get to it. Before I get into how I did my version and all of that jazz, I actually just want to talk about what a Draw This In Your Style event is. For those that already know, that's absolutely fine, you don't have to listen to this bit, but for those that don't, basically it's where an artist does a piece of artwork and then gives permission for other artists to then recreate it in their own style. Now, this is with the nod of either tagging the artist in or using a certain hashtag, which is generally what happens, just to show the artist, yep, this is what I've done, I've taken part, and it also shows to other people that this artwork was not originally yours and where you got the idea and inspiration from. It's really, really handy. I've talked about it in the past and I do take part in quite a few of them. They're really good for you to be able to learn something from an artist that inspires you. So for this, Miriam Tillerson is someone that I truly admire and I really wish I could recreate the level of emotion that she was able to portray in her pieces. She's an artist that, yeah, the emotion in her artwork is unreal and she tackles really big, almost in a, I kind of want to say taboo, but it's not so much anymore. But she does, she tackles hard subjects, things like mental health and depression, things like this. She tackles that in her artwork and explores that in her artwork. And I think it's amazingly done. She does slightly surreal work in the sense that her portraits and that look very human. They look very realistic, but the actual subject matter that's happening around it, that's all slightly more surreal. And it's all kind of portraying different emotions, different things that are happening in life that we can all kind of connect to in one way or another. And yeah, honestly, it's a type of artwork that I genuinely just love. This meant that when it came to doing my version, I didn't want to do it completely different. So some people were doing it where it was just the hands and snake. Some people were doing it where it was just the portrait and then either like the snake wrapped around the neck or something like that. Some people were doing it on digital medium, some were doing it, you know, th there were so many different things. And for me, I didn't want to do that. This was a piece that I have always liked of hers. It's a piece that just has so much emotion in that I didn't really want to change it. And this is a similar art style to what I want to be creating anyway, where it's that semi-realistic slash surreal portrait. So... The portrait itself is very realistic, but the actual concept is slightly more surreal and that's something that I really want to be doing. Obviously my work is more whimsical, it's a little bit more lighter, it's more childlike and just, yeah, it's just got that nicer carefree element to it and it's much brighter colours whereas hers are dealing with much darker emotions and her pieces kind of reflect that in terms of the colour palette is a lot more muted and cooler. For me, I did contemplate changing the colour palette completely and for going, trying to change this so it was a bit more whimsical, but it, if I did that, for me, I feel like I was doing a disservice to the piece because what inspires me so much about this piece is the emotion that it shows. And I, I didn't want to lessen that in any way. So that's why I kind of kept very similar to the way that she had done this in the sense that what she's drawn, I have just drawn. Like I haven't bothered trying to change it. One thing, I will be honest, I do look back on and wish I had changed is this flower part. For me personally, the flower is a bit too rigid. I did try doing it very similar to the way that she did it, but it didn't feel natural to me. It's very angular, it feels, like I say, just very rigid. Whereas flowers for me should be softer, more, just more of a flow to it. 
um, sorry, I know it's not the best description in the world, but it's kind of what I feel, and it's just, I just couldn't get that, it, it felt too rigid, but because I was so intent on, for this, doing it as a study on how to render skin, and to focus on hands, and to work on different version of light source, I didn't really think about putting my own twist on it that much. Um, again, I liked the portrait, I liked the whole composition as it is, but I do wish I had followed my instincts and changed that flower to something that was a little bit more whimsical, because that would have been able, one, for me to put my own tiny little spin on it, and two, I think I just would have been happier with the way it looks in the end, rather than the way it is now. But hindsight, it's always one of those things. But yeah, so as I said, for this piece, what I was taking from it was to be a study of the way she renders skin tone because I just find that she does it really really well and it's that's the sort of level that I aspire to be at. Also working on hands which is another reason why I didn't take away from the hands because mainly I work on portraits and I make the portrait the focal. I actually wanted to keep the hands as the focal point of this because I wanted to practice my hands. I'm not the best at drawing hands so this was a way for me to really push myself in that respect and as I said the light source is very different normally when I'm doing portraits I do a standard light source I don't really tend to do it anything unique or amazing it's, it's pretty standard so to have something where the light source is completely different to how I normally would paint it that was a challenge for me to make sure I was getting all the shadows and highlights in the right place so I was, yeah, as I said, I was super excited to do this, a massive fan of Miriam Tillerson, and as part of doing this, I actually did a wee bit of research. So, because I'm a patron of Miriam Tillerson's, I get access to her reward of having a video once per month of a process of a piece that she has created. And she actually did Bloom. Now, she did actually have this up before she did the Draw This In Your Style, so I had watched it before, but I then re-watched it when I realised that this was the one that she was doing. In that process video, she actually did a voiceover, detailing the materials she used, the process that she did, and any play, um, parts that she found difficult, and one of the biggest tips that I pulled from it was about the hands, because she had said how she doesn't do hands more soft and rounded, she does them very angular, and relies on like or at least this is how I'm remembering it, relies on the shadows and highlights to make them look more lifelike. So I wanted to try and do that, um, simply because as I've mentioned, hands are something I struggle with. <sighs> no matter how many times I do them, no matter how many times I practice, it's just the one part that I just really do struggle with, getting them to look right. Um, so I really wanted to take on what she had said and try and put that into practice because I tend to try and do them a bit more rounded and maybe maybe that's where I'm going wrong I don't know but I tried doing them more angular this time and I was a bit concerned because once I'd drawn them out I was like maybe the fingers are too long maybe it's not going to look right etc etc once we actually get there with all the shading and everything done I genuinely really liked the way they turned out I was really pleased with it it went a lot better than what I thought I was very nervous, as I said, with making hands the focal point of a piece, but it was definitely a challenge for myself that worked out and made me feel a little bit more confident, and I'm just hoping I can replicate that at some point. I did decide to also use gouache instead of watercolour. So Miriam Tillerson used watercolour for her piece, I'm using gouache, mainly because the watercolours that I have just aren't varied in colours enough for me to actually make this work. So I decided to use my Reeves gouache. Because it's so transparent, I really had to layer up. So as you saw in the background, I had to layer up quite a few times before I could get it to this depth of colour. And even then I reworked the hair a bit more. I did make a couple of changes. So the skin tone itself, I do quite a bit warmer than the way Miriam Tillerson does hers. So she does hers with quite a lot of blue in, whereas I'm not doing that as much. I genuinely struggle to do cooler skin tones. It's just, probably it's just because I am more drawn to pieces of artwork that have brighter, more vibrant, warmer colours in, 
than cooler tones. I do like cooler tones, don't get me wrong, I do think there is a place for them and everything, but as a personal preference of mine, I prefer warmer skin tone. So I didn't put in as much cool tones as what she did. I did a peach base as a base colour and then I worked over the top of that. So I actually did do one slight difference though. I actually used Burnt Sienna as part of doing some of the shadows, especially on the hands. This was a bit unusual for me. I don't normally use a Burnt Sienna. Normally I blend a skin tone with a peach and a magenta and some white and then either little hints of yellow for the parts where they're supposed to be highlighted where the light's reflecting or parts of blue sometimes green depending on what's in the background for the darker parts of the skin and I don't ever normally stray into brown colors but I really wanted to try it because of the way the light source was the underside of the hands is really quite harsh shadows but I still wanted to give depth to those shadows so I didn't want it to be one base color so to try and give it a bit more depth but still keep it darker than the rest of her skin tone where the light would be falling onto it but still keeping it in that warmer tone which is what I wanted I tried the burnt sienna and honestly really pleased with it I was quite surprised it's probably a technique that I'm definitely going to use again and a colour I'm going to use a bit more in my artwork just because that I really feel it did give a bit of added depth to the piece in terms of the shadows so like even where her belly part underneath where the hand is that I mainly did so I did do a peach tone but I had then mainly then worked on it with the burnt sienna and some slight tones of blue and I just I really like the way it ends up I think I could for this I definitely feel like I should have pushed the skin tone a little bit more and got some more richer colors in but going in with these the brown to kind of bring out those shadows gave more of a depth to what I have got for my artworks normally. So that's something where I can say genuinely really pleased with that. Now obviously the reference is a lot more blues and as said I decided not to do that and to be honest maybe it would have worked better if I did. I don't know because I can say at the end of this as I said I feel like I could have just kept working on that skin tone. For me it's one of those problems where originally I started off doing my portraits where I then did hardly any work on the skin tone and I left it very minimalistic with some line work just bringing out so kind of the feel of shadows and stuff but not actually working them in properly and then I'm starting to change that to really wanting to render the skin but now I'm getting to the point of I don't know when to stop so a few of my portraits I've been doing recently in the morning as part of my a portrait a day challenge I've been overworking it and so then the colors are muddying and that's then not working so I'm really trying to find that balance and I feel like I found it with this piece and it's something that I need to keep remembering and just walking that fine balance between overworking the piece to then underworking it like it's it's a fine balance but I feel like I pretty much got it with this so I do work in layers so I did the background first as you saw then I worked on the skin for a bit then I went back to the background then I work on this bit so just because each part of it is allowed to dry because I like to do all my pieces generally in one sitting occasionally I will spread it out over a few just depends how much time I've got but with having so much time at the moment I'm really enjoying just sitting down and just doing it in one sitting so this took me about four maybe five hours in total but because of how fast the gouache dries I'm able to just focus on a different part while another part dries to then rework in it and that's important to do and it's something that even Mary Tillerson suggested as well is because when you work on one bit so like I've put in the red of the flower here but then that kind of showed me that the lips were looking really flat and lifeless and they're not quite got the depth of color that I want so I go in and I sort that out and then it also kind of made me realize okay so then parts around the shoulder that's not quite as dark as where it should be because the red in that is making it look a little bit lighter so I need to go in and touch that up so that's something that is the good part about this because I have to wait for each area to dry so I work on a different part I can then look back and go okay so now this needs to change so as you can see here 
As I said, the mouth needed changing, so I added in a bit more red and a bit more magenta here. Same with adding a tiny bit more blush on her cheek and nose, just to give it that little bit more life. And then going in with slightly darker shadows around the edges, just to contrast it that little bit more. So that is important. The next part was the snake. So the snake is supposed to be transparent. And one way to do that was obviously keeping a lighter colour of whatever was in that background through the snake. So as you can see where the black background is, I have a lighter version of the grey. Where the hands and arms are, I have lighter versions of that skin tone that you can see through the snake. And it's also one thing that I did learn from Miriam Tillerson's video is keep where the hand is, because the snake's wrapped around it, normally you would think, oh, okay, so it's going to be really dark shadows. But that's not strictly true. Because the snake's transparent, it's going to make the shadows look lighter as well because you're seeing it through the snake. So I was careful not to overwork the shadows along the arm where the snake was wrapped around it just to try and prevent that. So as you see here, I do use yellow for the lighter highlights. It just brings out, again, some of that warmth in the skin tone. And that's, honestly, if I had been adhering more to Miriam Tillerson's, I would have swapped out the yellow for a blue because she's got blue during these patches. She doesn't have yellow. So that's another reason why my piece will look so much warmer compared to her version. So yeah, I was really pleased. I do do the yellow, so I do it in really thin washes and then I will towel off the excess because I only want it to be a slight touch. I don't want it to be too much. With the white gouache, I'm the good thing about white gouache is it actually doesn't dry opaque. It does dry very transparent, so it just mutes the colour that you're putting the white on over the top, which worked perfectly for this semi-transparent look. So because I was putting on the white so much, it doled out the colour of the rose and so the vine of the flower and it doled out some of the skin tone that I put on there so it just kind of gave off that fact that this is inside the snake you can see it through the snake like that's I was really actually quite liked that because one thing I can say that I do get frustrated with is is the white in gouache is that it's not very opaque so to do white highlights you either use the paper of the page or you use what I'm using here which is a gel pen just because it does make that bit much of a difference because the white as you can see now that it's dried it's not dried as a proper white it is just dulling down the tone underneath it which is great for these transparent effects not so great when you actually want white on your piece so generally i would either use white acrylic paint to actually get that um, more opaque look or white gel pen or even a posca pen as i'm using here so i'm trying to go in and just finishing up all of this with all the detailing and yeah, this was the bit where I really started to regret not changing that flower because I just struggled to make it look the way I wanted it to. It, like I said, it's just it's just a bit too rigid. These little crisscross effects here, I actually again that was something that Miriam Tillerson did in her piece, and it just kind of helps give the scale effect of the snake. So nothing too much because you don't want too much of it because again, if you do overwork the detailing too much, it just it doesn't work for a piece so instead if you just see kind of touches of it it will kind of carry on that illusion of it because again where you've got the light hitting it you're going to see it more in other places than you would so it's it's something that you've really got to balance so I would always do less and then if you feel it needs more you can go back over the top but never do loads of it straight away at first if you can help it and then on top of that white I then want to go in with my gouache again just to dull down the whites that I put on so that it looks more natural for the snake rather than seeming like I've just kind of crossed it out. Ah yes, so <laughs> this part, oh I was so frustrated, so I was taking off my washi tape, I was doing really well, I hadn't ripped the page, I was really happy with how the piece was looking, I was so happy and just, and then just just wait for it because this happened because I forgot how long I had been working on I was actually lied because I've been working on this piece for so long my camera battery just isn't that long I'm afraid but I have a picture of it finished so as you can see compared to the two my one's quite a bit warmer in tone hers she's it's so much better like I can hand on heart say that she's got the values there she's pushed and pulled them a lot more 
but I did learn a lot and that is the main thing and yeah it was just it was really really enjoyable okay that's it that's the end of the video thank you so much if you watched it this far it really does help the channel out if you're watching them all the way to the end and don't forget if you did enjoy this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe really again just all helps the channel out so much if you've got anything that you've been taking part in during this time where we've had more time to do things then put a comment below i'd like to see you or yeah see what everyone's been up to during these weird times Anyway, that's enough of me rambling. I'll catch you in a couple of days for the next videos. I've got a few set up and ready to go, such as sketchbook tours and a few different things. So hopefully you'll enjoy it. Um, but yeah, I will see you in the next one.